What makes a relation a function? Function, oh, so important. From this point on, you'll be doing so many functions in math. It's actually almost all about functions from this point on. So we know that a relation can be defined as a set of ordered pairs. We learned that relations can be described with a table of values, an arrow diagram, a graph, an equation, in words. The domain of a relation is the set of all the first elements of the ordered pairs, and the range is the set of all the second elements of the ordered pairs. Some relations have a certain quantity that makes it a function. Examples of relations that are functions and relations that are not functions are shown below. Examines these relations to determine what makes a relation a function. So relations that are functions. 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, negative 2, 5, negative 2, negative 4, 1, negative 4, 1, 7, 2 is a function, and 3, 2. So it's got to be something about this 7, 2, and 3, 2. Those are the only differences. All right, let's keep going. 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5. 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4. Mm -hmm. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, but notice the difference. <clears throat> we still have an 8, a 10, and a 12, but we have the 1 now pointing to the 10 and the 8, whereas this one only points to 10. Each of these guys only points to 1, and here you'll notice that we have the 3 as a domain element occurring twice. Here you'll notice the 5 occurs three times. All right, what else do we have here? <clears throat> Number 5, it's natural. 3.6 is rational. Negative 7 fourths is rational. Irrational, root 2, whole, 0, irrational, tan, 40. So notice we have two irrationals here. We got a graph. <clears throat> notice in these two here, they have the same domain value. And in these guys, none of them, no two dots line up this way. Here we have a semicircle. Here we have a full circle. Examine the above relations that are functions and determine what makes a relation a function. So a function is a relation where each element in the domain is associated with exactly one element in the range. Okay, so let's go back and look at the things that aren't functions. <clears throat> so 3 goes with 4, but 3 also goes with 2, not a function. 5 goes with 2 and 3 and 4, so the domain element 5 is associated with three different elements there, not a function. The domain element 1 is associated with two different elements, not a function. The domain element irrational is associated with two different things, not a function. We've got the point 3, 1 and 3, 2, not a function, since the 3 value in the domain is associated with both 1 and 2. And here, any value, the 2, let's say, is associated with positive 4 and negative 4, Whereas here, 2 is only associated with the range value of 4. Now, functions like a machine. For each particular input we put into our function, it will only generate one output. So, you know, drop a number in, turn the crank, which is hidden, it's on the other side, and out comes some output. For example, if our function is expressed as an equation, y equals 5x plus 3, then the function machine would work as follows. A domain or input value of 7 goes into the machine, which then does the math, right? So 5 times 7 is 35, plus 3 is 38, gives you the output value. So 7 can only produce 38. No other number, if you drop 7 in, it doesn't produce 38 one time, and 17 the next time, and 12 the next time, and that makes this a function. So a domain or input value produces only or exactly one range or output value. For this function, the input is x and the output is y. 
the input is always the independent variable and the output is always the dependent variable. How can we tell if a relation is a function? Well, if it's represented as a set of ordered pairs, then it's a function if the first elements of the ordered pairs are all different. So in this one, if you notice, we have negative 2, 0, 3, and 7. There is no repetition. When it's not a function, you notice that the 3 repeats. So this element of the domain 3 is associated with two different range values, both negative 7 and positive 4. If we have a table of values, then it's a function if the elements in the first column are different, apple, cherry, banana. But when we reverse this, we have not a function since red is associated with apple and red is associated with cherry. So it's okay if the first element has, you know, if two first elements point to the same second element, for example, down here, we'll get there in a sec. So let's look at it in the arrow diagram. Arrow diagram, it's a function if there's only one arrow for each element. So there's only one line coming off of each domain element. So 1 goes to 12 and so does 2. That's fine as long as only one arrow comes off. This is not a function since 3 goes to 9 and to 17. So it's defined as not a function. So in an arrow diagram, you're just looking to see that there's only one arrow coming off of each one. If a relation is represented as a graph, then it's a function if there's no point directly above another point on the graph. A graph represents a function when no two points lie on the same vertical line, which we call the vertical line test, which we'll get into in a sec. But you notice here that the value 3 has two different y values. You have the ordered pair 3, oh, bad value. Let's pick one. You have the ordered pair 1, 2. You have the ordered pair 1, negative 2. The value 1, if you made a table of values, would be repeated and therefore not a function. Or as ordered pairs, not a function. As a table of values, not a function. As an arrow diagram, not a function. As a graph, not a function. Vertical line test. If it is not possible for a vertical line to intersect the graph of a relation more than once, there is nowhere on this graph that I can draw a vertical line that's going to cut the graph more than once. There is, there are many points. Now I can draw a vertical line here, but that's not the point. The point is, can I draw a vertical line that cuts the function more than once? The question here is, can I draw a vertical line? And yes, I can, therefore it fails the vertical line test and it is not a function. It's a very quick way to see if a relation represented as a graph is a function or not. You can't use that as your definition, but you can use it to identify whether a graph is or is not a function. But don't define it that way. Okay? We need to, if we're going to say something is or isn't a function, then we're going to actually go back to the definition. A function is a relation where each element in the domain is associated with exactly one element in the range. If you want to learn anything Repeat this 157 times until you've myelinated a pathway a mile wide, and you know it. Exercise. Put a circle around all of the relations that are functions. Now, these are for you to do, but I don't, let's see how many, how many of them are there? Apparently just this one page, so... All right, cool, let's do it. Different, different, different. Put a circle. Well, I'm going to go with oval. Uh, negative 4 goes to, as soon as there's more than one line, so no. Fails vertical line test, nope. Any two points in a vertical line, nope. So that is a function. Uh, five, zero, three. Don't worry about the last. Worry about the first. So that's a function. Uh, this here. Tricky, right? I can draw a vertical line that goes through. So that is not a function. Three, one, three. Not a function. Alice John Phillip. Function. Ah, now here's an interesting one. This actually means that there's a hole in the graph that it's not defined at this point, but it happens to be defined here. You're going to see a ton of this in calculus. 
lots and lots of functions that will look like this. So it doesn't exist. There is no value for 3 except for negative 2. So the value 3 is only associated with the value in the range negative 2, not positive 3. That is a function. All quadratics are functions. Block, ball, ball. And I draw the vertical line. Will not cut. So that is a function. And I can't go on, so I shan't go on. Well, it's kind of short, he says, dragging things out a bit. But I think we're done.